today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for... It's a disaster here in Georgia, Governor. I mean, nothing has gone right. Tonight on primetime, harsh words for Governor Kemp from one of this state's most accomplished doctors, why he says... The state's response is about more than just numbers. More than 180 people out of a home after an apartment fire in Buckhead. What's being done now to help them tonight? Mrs. Williams, oh my God, you just got posted on this. You just got posted on this. And a back to school wrap that's bringing a lot of joy, a lot of fun, a lot of optimism, a sense of just feeling good to a Georgia community that has been in the midst of so much of COVID-19. We spoke with the teachers behind the viral video coming up. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. First tonight, we are tracking rain. This is some video from one of our 11 Alive storm trackers in Austell. So let's get you straight over to Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb in the 11 Alive Storm Tracker Center. Chris, a lot going on out there. Yeah, we do have a lot. We've been tracking these bands of heavy rain that have been moving through, and these have been moving in from the south, moving toward the north. So we had a lot of activity on the south side earlier. It came through Atlanta with heavy rain and thunder and lightning. Now, the worst of this is on the north side, and it's going to continue moving to the north. You can see how these showers were really heavy coming through Atlanta. Nothing severe here, but we did have some thunder and lightning as well as some very heavy rain. Now most of that heavy rain is stretching here uh, from parts of Bartow County, uh, actually through parts of Cherokee County. That's moving into Gordon and Pickens County as well as Dawson County. We have heavier showers in North Hall. That's going to move into White County. We do have lightning with this about 30 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes, and that's right along with that main line that continues to move up toward the north. We had some strong storms earlier around LJ. Those faded out, but you're not finished in LJ yet. Gilmer, Fannin County, all this is going to be headed your way as well. Look at this. We have a couple of flash flood warnings in effect right there on the Gordon County line and also Gilmer County line. This bullseye that you see right there, the uh, orange color, rainfall estimates of almost four inches right around the round top area with all of the heavy rain that came through that spot just a little bit earlier. North Georgia, you're going to get more of this, but we, we've got some breaks on the south side right now, and we'll enjoy the, the, be able to see those breaks continuing through the evening hours and overnight. We'll watch these showers move away. Stay with us. We'll talk about more showers developing for tomorrow, and we'll update you on the very active tropics. The Polk County School District is shut down abruptly, telling families they need all of this week to try to figure out how to handle COVID-19 guidelines set by the Department of Public Health. And now they are making some big changes. Our Caitlin Ross is looking at what it'll be like when classes resume next week. Well, first up, it won't be Monday. The district has designated every Monday as a teacher work day, and students will get the day off academically altogether. Their new model will have in-person and virtual instruction four days a week only. The plan was outlined in a letter sent home to parents last Friday when they told them they would have to close. The letter blamed changing guidelines about quarantining school-aged children for the sudden closure. 
We contacted the district multiple times to get clarity on what that meant and how closing for a week would solve it, but they did not return our calls or emails. What we know is there are multiple confirmed cases of COVID-19 in that school district. The local Department of Health did not have a number, but told 11 Alive there is a wide community spread of the virus. Our own numbers show the positivity rate in that county is still high, 16.3%. The state health department has recommended keeping schools closed until that number is lower than 5%. We also learned after tomorrow that Floyd County schools will be switching to virtual learning until at least September 8th. The district says since school began, 10 people have tested positive for COVID-19, leading them to quarantine. More than 350 students and staff members, about 8,000 students went back to in-person learning last week. The district is asking parents to report if their child has symptoms or tests positive within the next two weeks. Georgia continues to make some small progress in the fight against coronavirus today. The State Department of Health reports more than 2,700 new cases. Those numbers are trending downward from record high earlier this month. But both the CDC and the White House Coronavirus Task Force suggest they're still way too high. One reason for falling cases, demand for testing is also dropping. The teal bars here show the positive cases. The orange shows the number of total tests each day. There were 21,000 new tests reported today. Our average is about 26,000. All that means the average positivity rate in Georgia remains well above 10% when the recommendation is less than 5%. A passionate response from one of Georgia's top medical pros. This to Governor Kemp after the governor defended the state's COVID-19 response. This morning on CNN, Dr. Sanjay Gupta shared his thoughts on Governor Kemp's response to a White House Coronavirus Task Force report. The report indicates Georgia has the highest coronavirus case rate in the country. Yesterday, Governor Kemp said people need to look at all the numbers, including hospitalizations, to get a better idea of what is going on in Georgia. But Dr. Gupta says there is more to it than numbers. We opened so early that even the president was sort of shocked Georgia's already opening. When we opened, we opened bars and nail salons and bowling alleys, had no regard for what was going to happen in the fall with schools. Uh, we have the fastest, the quickest pace of acceleration of new cases. We had the highest per capita cases in the country, perhaps in the world right now when it comes to Georgia. The, this governor expressed seemingly genuine surprise that this virus could spread asymptomatically despite the fact that people already knew this for weeks or for months. He, he uh, has not put a statewide mask mandate in and has threatened uh, mayors with lawsuits who do that. I mean, these are the facts. This is what my governor is doing for the people that I live with, my family in this state. So he wants people to have all the information. It's a disaster here in Georgia, Governor. I mean, nothing has gone right, and you've actually condemned and maligned the people who've actually tried to do something. Dr. Gupta is an associate professor of neurosurgery at Emory University Hospital and associate chief of neurosurgery at Grady. He was elected to the National Academy of Medicine. Let's take a look now at some of our other local headlines today in our speed feed. Right now, I-285, or rather earlier today, I-285 South, uh, the ramp at Spaghetti Junction shut down as crews were to overclear an overturned tractor trailer out there. DeKalb County police say that Hazmat was also called in to help because the truck appeared to have spilled some paint or a similar substance. The driver of the truck was taken to the hospital and we're told no other vehicles were involved, but clearly a mess out there shutting down lanes for hours. I was in that for uh, about 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. rough out there. Uh, also today, U.S. jobless claims surging past 1 million this week. That's after two weeks of declining numbers. But here in Georgia, those first time claims continue to drop, falling to just over 58,000 last week. Georgia's unemployment rate is 7.6%. That's lower than the national average, which has tripled since the start of the pandemic. Airbnb now banning parties and events at its listings across the world. Starting tomorrow, the company is capping occupancy at 16. That move follows a crackdown on house parties here in Atlanta. The company says it had to remove more than 50 Atlanta listings and uh, that followed complaints and policy violations. Well, it is the final night of the Democratic National Convention. Joe Biden going to accept the nomination as the party's presidential candidate and the campaigning started long ago. He released a new ad today in several battleground states. What happens now? We elect a president who will build back better. Also speaking tonight, Atlanta's mayor, four presidential candidates who dropped out of the race and have since 
endorsed Mr. Biden. There will also be a tribute to uh, the late Congressman John Lewis from the 5th Congressional District, a civil rights hero and legend. During the Democratic National Convention, Georgia's delegates have been meeting daily on Zoom as they strategize for the November election. Joe Hankey talked with a delegate today about the unique convention and how it could impact efforts to grab voters' attention. During normal times, Georgia's 100-plus Democratic delegates would be up in Milwaukee this week game planning and getting energized ahead of November's election. This week's DNC and next week's RNC, though, are not happening in normal times. The DNC has been broadcast this week from a small room in Milwaukee's Wisconsin Center with no crowds. I accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States of America. Senator Kamala Harris's VP acceptance speech featuring a few seconds of silence in place of a standing ovation. You couldn't get that crowd support in the noise. As you know, good speakers always play to their audiences. Georgia delegate and state Senator Emanuel Jones says he has found himself hanging on every word of the convention speeches so far, but he understands why TV viewership is down for a virtual convention. Network and cable TV numbers down 27% for day one, 26% for day two compared to 2016. The Biden campaign's national press secretary, though, tweeting record numbers of people are watching online. And Jones says Georgia's delegates are still organizing as best as they can virtually. We uh, have some really serious meetings where we sit down and talk about strategy and how we can continue to grow our Democratic Party in the great state of Georgia. Hey. 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 Daily convention meetings taking place this year on Zoom, which Jones admits is a bit less personal, but delegates are still hearing directly from top party members such as Stacey Abrams, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, former U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, and National Party Chair Tom Perez. Now the real work begins, Jones says. This week, delegates received their marching orders on how best to mobilize voters, especially during a pandemic. Hard to attend uh, a lot of different uh, uh, organizations that typically you would visit uh, while you're out campaigning. Our coverage of the final night of the DNC continues in the next half hour. We spoke to Mayor Bottoms ahead of her speech tonight. You will hear what it was like when she heard that Kamala Harris was Joe Biden's VP pick. More than 180 people out of a home after a fire destroys a Buckhead apartment complex. Next, we speak with two people left picking up the pieces and get a look at what's being done to help them and so many others. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. There's more 11 Alive news in prime time after this break. Yeah. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. The community coming together to help nearly 200 people that were forced out of their homes by that massive apartment fire in Buckhead yesterday. The fire quickly tearing through the building, the damage 
Evident as 11 Alive Sky Tracker flew above it yesterday, even the units that weren't burned are, are now closed off because of the flooding from all the water the fire department had to use to put the blaze out. But as our Letitia, uh, Latasha Given shows us, people are reaching out to help those who were impacted during this tough time. Well, as of this afternoon, a total of 182 people are now displaced because of the fire, including a popular radio DJ. Now, fire officials say although there is only one injury, the damage is so bad, the building is now unlivable. And all of a sudden, um, my power goes out. But then I smell smoke. And I'm Media personality radio god Stu from Hot 1079 says he went outside to investigate. I'm just hit with a big cloud of smoke right in my face. And I'm like, oh my God. And you can just feel the, the, the heat from the flames just coming, coming, coming. Stu was able to get out of the apartment building before it collapsed. I heard people screaming fire, um, but there were no alarms or anything. So I just kind of ignored it. Thought people were just playing. Chris Bonkar says he walked out and saw clouds of smoke billowing over Buckhead. I walked outside just in case. I looked up, but I saw um, the AC units were smoking. And as I was walking out, you heard a loud pop and the flames started going up. The Red Cross is now assisting the 182 people that are displaced with food, clothing, and money. Residents tell us the complex has paid for them to stay in hotels for a week and is working to relocate them to available units on other properties. Um, they're offering uh, per diems per day for food and personal items. Ron Carr says he was finally able to pick up his car today from the parking garage. Stu says in a year with so many tragedies, this is a reminder to be prepared for anything. I bet you don't realize that things like this can happen at any given moment, you know, so you definitely want to um, be prepared for this, you know, make sure that you have like your important information, your important documents, you know, things like that, like ready accessible. And we're looking at the claims about some residents who told us they never actually heard the fire alarms go off. They tell us instead they either saw smoke or their power went out. Now, fire officials tell us when they arrived, the system was activated. We'll continue to follow the story. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We're still watching some of those showers and storms that are generating some thunder and lightning on the north side. And I know a lot of times when you look at stuff and you see things up in North Georgia, you're thinking, OK, that's going to be in Atlanta soon, right? Well, this one's totally different. This has already moved through Atlanta and it's been pushing in from the south to the north. So you can see those heavier showers that came through earlier. That's now moving to the north and they will continue pushing up through the rest of North Georgia tonight. Now we had those showers here. We are seeing some breaks in the rain now it is tapering off. It's still really wet out there though and we still have a lot of clouds around. But here is that main line. This stretches back to the east of Rome right here through parts of uh, Bartow County. We have some thunder and lightning right there along 75. Also moving up into Gordon County uh, right here. Pickens County, Dawson, Lumpkin and that's moving into White County. North Hall you've had some heavy rain that has been pushing through and in all of that we have lightning. We have about 43 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Earlier when I queried this it was 30 lightning strike. So we've actually gone up a little bit with more of that lightning intensifying a little bit and that's going to keep moving up toward the north uh, impacting uh, Ella J Gilmer County. You already had heavy rain that came through there earlier moving up toward Dalton also into Fannin County towns Union counties as well as that continues moving on up to the north. We are getting some breaks on the south side and things will start to calm down a little bit more and more for the rest of the evening hours. Here's a live look. This is in Rome and I've moved the camera to look over uh, toward the east toward those showers and storms that are on the line there over into Bartow County and you can see those darker clouds in association with that. We're getting some crazy pictures in from some of our 11 Alive community storm trackers. This is from Craig Nassau in Decula uh, at the cloud formation there. Partially maybe a roll cloud or shelf cloud that is trying to develop and then this is from Kim Phillips in Flowery Branch. I just showed you some of those showers that were in Hall County a little bit earlier that are moving to the north. This is what that cloud cover looked like with that storm uh, moving through Flowery Branch just a little while ago. Now the good news with this rain, it's cooled us off. We're at 72. We were in the mid 80s earlier before the rain came in. We're even in the 60s in Marietta and also in Carrollton and in Gainesville. It's in the 60s too with that rain. Tomorrow we're back up to around 83. Only a five on the wasometer as we'll see mostly cloudy skies. Scattered showers at any time of the day tomorrow. You can see the showers diminishing here tonight and then even 
even in the morning tomorrow, we have the potential for showers. It's not going to be just afternoon showers tomorrow. They could happen in the morning. Also, a few showers developing in the af in the lunchtime hour and then in the afternoon too. We'll have some of those scattered showers around diminishing in the evening. And I'm really thinking we're going to start off the day Saturday with dry weather conditions, but then in the afternoon Saturday, we'll see those scattered showers re redeveloping with the rain chance down a little bit at 50%. We have two tropical depressions to watch uh, out in the Atlantic. This one is really having a hard time getting organized, and it should become a tropical storm tomorrow. There are tropical storm watches in effect for the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and many of the islands here. It looks like this storm could become a hurricane in South Florida uh, by Monday and then move into the Gulf of Mexico. But I have to tell you, one of our models is kind of shying away from this, really intensifying too much before it makes it into the Gulf. There's another one right here. This is a tropical depression that will become a a tropical storm as well that could move in toward the Texas Louisiana area by Tuesday. So next week we could have two tropical systems in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time if they hold together. 60% chance for showers tomorrow, 50% Saturday, down to 40% Sunday and down again to 30% Monday with those temperatures climbing back into the upper 80s and then a 40% chance for showers Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday rain chances higher. That all depends on though if we get any impacts from the remnants of those tropical systems. When it comes to football, one of the biggest fears related to COVID is the long-term effects it can have on the heart. As Alex Glaze tells us, one local college football player revealed today is suffering from a heart condition after suffering with the virus, and he will not be able to play this season. Eight months ago, Michaeli Colasudra was celebrating the end of his high school football career after winning a state championship. Today, the Georgia State freshman put out a statement on social media saying, that he's been diagnosed with a heart condition as a result of a COVID-19 infection. He added, he will not be playing football this season. And joining me now is Dr. Sujatha Reddy, our medical expert. Dr. Reddy, we've heard of heart conditions being linked to COVID-19. How much do we know about the long-term effects of COVID-19 and what and how it can affect the heart? As far as the long-term effects, I'm not sure anyone can answer that because this is a novel or new virus we're going to have to see. But with a lot of heart muscle inflammation infections that we see have seen in the past, we know some people recover and some people don't. What's the current prognosis for heart-related conditions when it comes to uh, COVID-19? So, you know, the prognosis is going to depend on if that person's heart muscle recovers fully or not. There are objective tests that can be done to assess is the heart back to its full, you know, um, ability or is it somewhat weakened because of a viral infection. But as far as the prognosis, it's really going to depend person to person. There are a lot of people who may not have any long term effects on their heart from coronavirus and there may be some who do. The final night of the Democratic National Convention has Atlanta in the spotlight. Next in primetime, we caught up with Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms ahead of her speech tonight to talk about this big moment and what it means for the city. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Tonight is the final night of the DNC. Joe Biden officially accepts his nomination as the Democratic Party's candidate for president. Some other speakers include many who are part of a Democratic race, like Senator Cory Booker, Andrew Yang, and Pete Buttigieg. But there will be a spotlight on Atlanta with Mayor Bottom scheduled to speak. Aisha Howard had the opportunity to talk with the mayor as she gets ready to address people all across the country. It is such an honor to be a part of this, uh, a personal honor to be invited to speak, but it really speaks to the value that the nation sees in Atlanta. Uh, to have a mayor of Atlanta as a part of this historic night is really something that should be celebrated, um, uh, that our city should be proud of. Mayor of Atlanta speaking on a huge night like that at the DNC, the mayor who was also on the short list for VP. Tell us about that day for you and when the announcement came out that Kamala Harris was Joe Biden's VP pick. Uh, as I would watch television and read stories and the speculation, and I would think they don't have any idea what's happening in this process. But again, out of 330 million folk in America, to be a part of the process was an honor. The fact that Kamala Harris was chosen, and this is such a, a historic moment for us as a country, the fact that there will be a woman, and then on top of that, a woman of color um, on the ticket, and I know they're gonna win in November, is something that we should all celebrate. And I'm so very excited um, for the direction and the opportunity we have to go in a different course in this country. You've heard it time and time again. This is one of the most historic elections. People say it is one of the most important. How do you think the virtual aspect is going to change, even with you having to prepare to deliver that speech, not in person? But I think what we see happening with the convention is representative of 2020. Nothing's been normal about 2020. But that being said, I, I got chills watching the roll call from the various states. It was so moving and seeing the stories and having an opportunity for a cross section of people to be a visible part of the convention. I think it's a silver lining in all of this. And I would venture to say it's given people across the country an opportunity to feel a part of the convention um, in a way that they otherwise might not feel if they weren't in Milwaukee. So we know you've been going hard for Joe Biden for quite a while, and Atlanta still has a mayor named Keisha, but could we have a mayor who becomes a part of the Biden cabinet should the Dems bring this home in November? You know, I haven't gotten that far. I mean, I there's a really big job uh, that I have right now, and that's being mayor of Atlanta. And so we'll get to November. We'll see what happens in November, but my focus continues to be on our city and to continue to do the job I was elected to do. You can watch Mayor Bottoms speak tonight during the convention, and if you want to hear more from the interview that Aisha conducted, it is posted on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Coming up, he gives back to the community by holding funerals for those who cannot afford one in a pandemic. His job is more important than ever, but there are plenty of obstacles in the way. Practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best pr you know, some of these storms are still holding together pretty well with thunder and lightning up in North Georgia. These are not moving toward Atlanta, though. We have already had this move through our area earlier, and it's all pushing up toward the north. But you can see this band of heavy rain stretching from to the east of Rome up through parts of Gordon County, Pickens County, Dawson County, White County, over here into areas of Stevens County as well. And that's going to keep moving up toward the north uh, into the rest of North Georgia. Left behind this system, we already had the heavy rain that came through Atlanta. We had thunder and lightning with that as well. And some of these were stronger than others, especially east of the city and on the south side where it was a little bit stronger earlier. Now things are tapering off a little bit. Now we do still have a few showers here on the south side that will keep moving through, but they're not as heavy. But here's that heaviest activity. You saw that right there at Mossy Creek there in White County. We have some heavy rain with thunder and lightning there. I mentioned this stretches over to Toccoa there in Stevens County, also into Dawson County, uh, Pickens County, Gordon County as well. That's moving into Gilmer where they've already had some heavy rain and a flash flood warning in effect for the southern parts of Gilmer County. Fannin County, you'll be getting in on that. Towns, Union County, you'll be getting on some of that heavy rain too. Lightning count still pretty impressive. About 59 lightning strikes in that band in the past 15 minutes, and that's higher than what it was uh, last half hour. So get ready in LJ and these other counties here up in North Georgia as that rain is going to be headed your way. We're getting some breaks on the south side, but it's not totally over. We're still tracking a few additional showers here south of I-20, just not as heavy or as strong as they were earlier. But just don't be surprised if you see a few more showers rolling through tonight. These will taper off overnight, but then we're going to have more scattered showers redeveloping tomorrow. We'll break that timeline down for you coming up. Chris, thank you. A Union City man is back home with his family for the first time in months. The husband and father had been in the hospital battling COVID-19 since April. Our Natisha Lance has his story of recovery. It's the day Derek Duncan and his family prayed for. They were all smiles as the 54 year old was discharged from Emory Hospital after a three month battle with COVID-19. I was able to leave the hospital. Finally, I was able to come back 
home to my family. The raspy whisper of his voice comes as a result of nearly two months on a respirator. The father of five with no underlying issues says he started feeling sick after taking a road trip to Ohio. He was rushed to Emory Hospital on April 28th. As soon as I got to Emory, I was, I couldn't breathe and they admitted me and put me on a respirator. He spent several weeks in the ICU without his family being able to see or speak to him. Not being able to hear somebody and see what kind of struggle they're going through or what kind of pain they're going through, um, it's pretty hard. At times, Duncan didn't know if he'd pull through, but his family stayed prayerful. My family prayed a lot. And the doctors at Emory also. Now that he's back home, it's still a long road to recovery. He's not able to walk on his own, and his voice is still healing. He says he looks forward to doing the little things again, like walking his dog and simply being independent. He's a fighter, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be back on his feet in no time. Duncan wants others to take this disease seriously and stay out of large crowds. A chaplain in Fulton County showing what it means to be of service. For years, he has performed funerals for those who cannot afford it, and he's also helped feed the hungry. And now, times are getting even more difficult. He tells 11 Alive's Matt Pearl his mission is to keep doing what he loves to do. Let us pray. Two days a week. Almighty and gracious God. Almighty and gracious Father. 400 times a year. We pray now. So we pray now. For every good and precious gift. Reverend Clifton Dawkins says the same prayer. Mercy. Mercy. For your mercy. For a person he's never met whose face he hasn't seen. There is a place where there'll be no more sickness. But that prayer. No more pain. That gesture matters. I think all human beings deserve a measure of dignity, especially in death. Dawkins is the chaplain director for Fulton County. He performs burials for those who cannot afford one. Face to face in your glory. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, his schedule has filled up. Whatever race or whatever religion, pain is still the same. Sadness and, and tears are still the same. The pandemic has meant more services here and here. There's a need. Dawkins owns a humble building on Atlanta's west side. <laughs> Two days a week here, he serves meals and gives clothes to whoever comes. 300 people at the church, there's no judgment. There's no, let me save you first before I can help you. This pandemic has had an effect financially, economically. I know what it feels like to be hungry, uh, to be homeless to feel like no one cares. When you have empathy for that, then something with that within you will push you. At a time of isolation, Dawkins is driven by empathy. It's why he still ran the grill last Saturday, even after what happened last Tuesday. Our church got broken into, um, stole a lot of equipment and things that we have. And so I had to really do some prayer about feeding this Saturday, but I knew I was going to do it. People are really desperate. So the feedings and the drives go on. And two days a week. God, we know that you are able. 400 times a year. To comfort those hearts and sadness. Clifton Dawkins says that same prayer with that same purpose. One of my uncles told me we should do all that we can while we can. Because when we can't, how can we? So I just try to do all that I can while I'm here. Dawkins says he spends tens of thousands of dollars of his own money each and every year to fund the food and clothing giveaways. And this year, because of COVID-19, that number obviously is going to rise, and he is trying to get some help wherever he can. There is a timely effort to help food insecure families amid this unprecedented time of layoffs and furloughs. Today, the Atlanta Community Food Bank opened its first ever food center in Gwinnett County. Nick Sturdivant reports from Stone Mountain with more on how many meals it plans to distribute and the big name rapper who helped make it all possible. Behind me is the 14,000 square foot facility that will help distribute food to families across Metro Atlanta in the first year. The goal is to give out more than 500,000 meals. This morning was the grand opening for the new community food center. This is the first ever food center Atlanta Community Food Bank has opened in Gwinnett County. They told me the reason they chose this area is because this is such a big county, which is now projected to have a more than 14% food insecurity rate because of the coronavirus pandemic, which according to 
Feeding America's Map the Mill Gap study is more than the national average of 11.5 percent back in 2018. There were gaps in our distribution network. Uh, we needed to find ways and strategies for filling those gaps. Uh, and that led to the idea of opening up uh, food pantries, community food centers. And right now the food center is only open by appointment only, but you can call the Atlanta Community Food Bank to schedule an appointment. Six founding donors made generous gifts to help make the food center on Parker Court and Stone Mountain a reality. Atlanta rapper Offset, one third of the Migos and husband to Cardi B, is one of them giving back to the community where he grew up. The NBA playoffs continue. The league tries to keep the coronavirus off the court. A big part of that is the creation of these bubbles the players cannot leave. We wanted to take a closer look at how that works and if they can be applied to other sports or to communities. When the game stopped and the courts were emptied, no one knew when or if professional sports were going to come back. Then the NBA had an interesting idea. Separate your players completely and the teams from the rest of the world. Basically create a sports bubble. It was an experiment, and so far it's paid off. So how exactly does this bubble work? Well, there are a lot of procedures in place to make sure the bubble doesn't burst. In the NBA's case, there are 132 pages of safeguards. Dr. Jason Wilson from Tampa General says this plan wasn't just thrown together overnight. The NBA has actually had quite a bit of thought process behind this in terms of the lead end. You got to make sure that people are sort of pre screened, uh, that people come into the bubble essentially viral free. So, first, you need an environment where the virus doesn't exist. That means before coming in, every person had to isolate for several days and get two negative tests. Once inside the bubble, though, life isn't that normal. Dr. Wilson says you still need to have the best public health initiatives in place, and there still needs to be social distancing regular testing, limited movement, and different phases. So even if you've created a world where people aren't testing positive for the disease, you still need preemptive measures because the virus is going to try and get in. If there's not high transmission going on between people, there's not much the virus can do, right? It's, it relies on us to transmit the virus and to help the virus reproduce and propagate it and make more virus. And if we're not helping the virus do that, then the virus has no business being there. The bubble idea is working in the NBA so far, but could we apply it to towns or even whole states? Here's the, here's the simple truth is I don't know if it'll work and we don't know if it's gonna work because we haven't done this really before. One of the big differences Dr. Wilson pointed out was the NBA has created an environment without social stress. Players don't need to leave the bubble for food or work, it's all provided. And it would be tough to create that scenario in a community. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. 
Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. As we approach the final night of the Democratic National Convention, let's take a step back and look at some of the speeches from last night. It's important to hold politicians accountable and our Verify team worked to fact check all of the claims made last night. So here's Jason Puckett with a look at some of them. Wednesday was a packed night with speeches by Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and of course Kamala Harris. But it was actually two other speakers we're fact checking right now. Let's start with the claim from Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. More than 5 million Americans are infected by the coronavirus. This is false. We have had more than 5 million cases of COVID-19 total in the U.S., but all of those people aren't currently infected. Johns Hopkins data shows an estimated 2 million people have recovered in the U.S., and another 170,000 have died. That leaves about 3.4 million people that could be infected right now. Next to claim from Senator Elizabeth Warren. Today, America has the most COVID deaths in the world. This claim is true, but needs context. Data from the CDC and Johns Hopkins show that the United States does have the most COVID deaths in total. But we also have the third largest population in the world. If you adjust the deaths by population, we're no longer the top of the list. Johns Hopkins breaks down the mortality rate in two different ways. One chart looks at deaths per 100,000 people. The U.S. is 12th in the world on that list. And a separate chart compares the observed case fatality ratio, which is found by dividing the number of deaths by the number of total cases. On that chart, we're fourth in the world. Still tracking those storms on the north side right now that continue to move up toward the north with bands of heavy rain and thunder and lightning. We're getting a break in the action right now in Atlanta. We still have a few lighter showers east and south of Atlanta that'll keep moving up toward the north. So it's not totally over, but things are going to start diminishing tonight. And I know it's kind of weird that we're watching this stuff in North Georgia. It's not moving our way. It's moving up toward the north. It's got more of a southerly flow here, pushing that northward. And even if you look at these storms back in Alabama, those aren't moving our way either. They're pushing up toward the north. North too. A lot of thunder and lightning right there along Highway 59 over in Alabama. So here's what we're watching. A break in the rain now, but we had those heavier showers that came through earlier. They're now up in North Georgia uh, through near Calhoun. Also moving into the extreme eastern parts of Floyd County, northern parts of Bartow. There's in Gordon. Also Pickens moving into Gilmer, southern parts of Fannin, about to cross the line over into Union and Towns. White County getting in some of that heavy rain. Dawson County as well. And some thunder and lightning. We've been watching the lightning count. A last check at the uh, bottom of the hour. It was above 50. Now we're down to 35. Hopefully that's showing us that this is starting to weaken a little bit. And we're not seeing as much lightning with it, but you can see how it's continuing to move on up toward the north. More breaks here on the south side, which is good news. And we do think that once this moves out, these additional showers will also fall apart too, and it'll be quieter during the overnight hours. Here's a live look down in Coweta County in Noonan. We had some heavier showers down there a little bit earlier, but things are drier there now too. Now look at our high today. We did make it into the mid 80s, about four degrees below average. We should be at about 88 for this time of year. Uh, and we picked up about a third of an inch of rain at Hartsfield officially. 
Many of you did pick up more though in some of those bands of heavier showers and that surplus is still right at about 11 inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. So tonight we're watching that rain as it exits our area and then in the morning though we could still have a chance for some showers around. I know lately we've been dealing with afternoon and evening showers. Tomorrow they can happen at any time. In the morning we may have some showers at lunchtime, scattered stuff, and then in the afternoon still some scattered showers around as well. We do think things will diminish in the evening hours on Friday and then Saturday we go back to that pattern of dry mornings and dry lunch times. But then in the afternoon when we see some of those scattered showers popping up at about a 50% chance of that for your Saturday. We're also keeping an eye on the tropics where we have two tropical depressions, one right here in the Caribbean and then another one in the Atlantic here. This is getting closer to the islands. Both of these are tropical depressions and both of these could become uh, tropical storms at any time. Uh, Air Force Reconnaissance plane just flew into this one. It's having a hard time getting organized and in fact uh, this one over here in the Caribbean is actually looking a little better. So whichever one forms first, will be named Laura. All right, so this is Tropical Depression 13. It is most likely going to become a tropical storm at some point tomorrow, just going north of the islands, but we do have a tropical storm watching effect for Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, as well as many other islands there. Could become a hurricane in South Florida by Monday and then Tuesday, maybe nearing the Florida Panhandle as a, a hurricane. Again, that's if it holds together. Now these intensity tracks and forecast tracks can change. This one uh, may be approaching the Texas or Louisiana coastline by Tuesday as well. Yeah, you heard that right. Both of those on Tuesday, we could have two tropical systems in the Gulf next week. 60% chance for showers Friday coming down to 50% Saturday, then 40% Sunday, even a little lower Monday with temperatures rising as those rain chances go down. Back to a 40% chance Tuesday and Wednesday. Rain chances Thursday may be a little bit higher, but that all depends on what happens with the remnants of those systems that are moving through the tropics. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
Two Georgia teachers made two videos meant to calm fears and nerves and bring some fun back to kids. They really have some talent here, too. It has been shared thousands of times in the last 24 hours. The teachers telling our Cheryl Preheim the students at Monroe Comprehensive are very excited. They've been logging on early for their virtual class. What's pop? What a start to the year. Your videos have gone all over the world already. Completely viral. Text messages, emails. It has just been so overwhelming. <laughs> Brand new year and I'm locked in. Kelly Evans and Adriana Williams are the high school teachers behind the What's Poppin' videos for a memorable start to a virtual school year. COVID-19 ain't worried about a thing when the economy ain't no stop. Hey. <laughs> Needless to say, we are very happy. What was the best part of putting it all together? Getting the choreography together with our cheerleaders, going to the studio and actually recording and actually feeling like we're real rappers. So this is actually really fun. Oh. On the south, we do more than rap. Do we can't just to get you out the trap. A blast, but it had a bigger purpose too. Your students, your community have been through so much. I had so many kids who, you know, would email me and say, Mrs. Williams, I'm sorry, but I can't do my work. I have COVID. My dad just passed away. Albany is a small city. When the pandemic started, their community of 75,000 in Southwest Georgia was the hot zone, hit harder than almost any other city in the United States. People knew all of those that passed away. If it's somebody that I uh, I teach and they're hurting, then that means I'm hurting too. They wanted to lift everyone's spirits. You can overcome adversity, you know, no matter what you're going through, you can always strive to be the best. And so I think this rap has really done that. The students love it. You know, Miss Evans don't play. And I just feel like the morale of the city is continuing to go up. Those are great teachers and those kids are lucky. Coming up next on Primetime, demanding justice. The call tonight for the Cobb County DA to reopen a case after a man dies in custody. Shocking, shameful video after repeatedly yelling he could not breathe. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, 
extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive TV. Steve Bannon, a former advisor to President Trump, is under arrest today and facing fraud charges for his involvement in a private fundraiser to build a border wall. Prosecutors say most of the money intended for the wall was funneled into the private coffers of Bannon and three others. Bannon's attorney entered a plea of not guilty on his behalf. Here's a story from NBC's Dan Shineman. Former White House aide Steve Bannon leaving federal court after he was charged with defrauding donors in an online effort to build a wall at the southern border. In court, Bannon's attorney entered a not guilty plea on his behalf. The charges say Bannon and others behind the website We Build the Wall promised money raised through the site would be used to help President Trump construct a barrier at the U.S. border with Mexico. Some $25 million was raised through the site, and while NBC News has learned some of the money was used to build small portions of a southern wall, prosecutors allege most of the money went into the pockets of Bannon and three others, and it was used for personal expenses. It's a paper case. It's based on documents, which is the kind of case prosecutors love because it makes for very strong evidence. Bannon was arrested on board this yacht, the 152-foot Lady May in Long Island Sound. He was taken into custody without incident. At the White House, President Trump was asked about the arrest of his former aide. I know nothing about I was not involved in the project. I have no idea who was. If convicted, Bannon could face up to 20 years in prison for each charge. It is absolutely unfathomable that these individuals have not been charged with crimes. Right now on prime time, a call to action in the death of Kevin Wingo, left alone and in pain for hours inside a Cobb County jail. An update on our exclusive 11 Alive investigation. One Georgia district abruptly shutting down schools amid COVID concerns, how they're making changes to get students back to class. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. But first, we are tracking rain for you tonight. This is video from one of our storm trackers in Austell. Let's get you straight to Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb in the 11 Alive Storm Tracker Center to show us how it's shaping up now, Chris. Yeah, in spots that just didn't want to let up today where we had these bands of heavy rain that are, have been moving through the area. We're still tracking some uh, over on North Georgia. What's interesting with this, and I was just telling the folks, almost 300 people right now on Facebook Live, you can see my phone here. I was just telling them on Facebook Live, what's interesting with this is that normally when you see storms in North Georgia, you think they're coming to Atlanta next. That is not the case with these. These are actually moving from the south toward the north. So we've already had those showers that moved through Atlanta. Some of them had some heavy rain, thunder and lightning with them. These are not classified as severe storms, but still some good rain with them and a lot of lightning too. So the bulk of that is out of Atlanta. We've got some breaks in that right now, but still it's not totally over. A couple of little scattered showers still moving through. One of these just south of Lawrenceville still has some heavy rain in it with it. But the main line of showers and some still thunder and lightning is from Gordon County, uh, Gilmer County, Pickens County, Dawson, White County, and that continues to move up toward the north into Union County and Towns County. Now that lightning count has really come down. Earlier, just last hour, we had more than 50 lightning strikes in a 15 minute period. It's now down to 18. So this is weakening as it moves to the north. Uh, most of the lightning right now is right there over White County, and that's moving up toward Towns and Union County as well. So we're seeing some of the breaks here on the south side, more breaks, and that's going to over during the overnight hours, we'll continue to see those showers diminishing somewhat. Take a live look out there right now. This is our tower cam down in Coweta County where the roads are still wet. Conditions are still uh, wet down there as well, uh, but the rain is pretty much over. And again, stay with us. We're going to be talking about when we'll see additional showers developing tomorrow, and we'll take you out to the tropics to show you those tropical depressions we're watching. And if you want to come to my Facebook page right now, we're continuing that um, conversation right now at Chris Holcomb 11 Alive on Facebook. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. You know, we're going to begin tonight with a look into the future and the November election, Aisha. Publicly, Georgia Democrats are still saying they can win control of the State House of Representatives, but behind the scenes, they could be focusing on 2022. 11 Alive's Doug Richards looks into what Democrats are really saying about flipping the House. Republicans took control of the State House from Georgia Democrats in the 2004 election and have held it ever since. Democrats have been saying they hope to be able to take control back in this election. But can they really? Sharon Cooper is a target. So is Deborah Silcox. 
They're both suburban Republican members of the Georgia House of Representatives. They're trying to keep their seats in the face of some well-organized Democratic opposition in a year when Democrats are feeling ambitious. We have many opportunities here in Georgia, two U.S. Senate races, our 16 electoral college votes, and Doug, we're going to flip the state House of Representatives. So we have many opportunities here. That was Democratic Party Chair Nakima Williams earlier this month. In 2016, Republicans had 56 more House seats than Democrats did. In 2018, Democrats cut that margin nearly in half. Now Democrats would need to flip 15 more seats to achieve a tie. But a Democratic-leaning fundraising site called Act Blue lists only 13 Democratic House challengers, two seats short of a tie, in what it describes as an effort to flip the House, saying actually flipping either chamber is a pretty tall order and that they might have to finish the job in 2022. Yet a Georgia Democratic Party spokeswoman says the party is still confident that we can flip the state house this year. The Democrats will pick up seats. Will they get enough to flip the house? It's going to be a close call, and we'll only know when all the votes are counted. When Republicans flipped the state Senate nearly 18 years ago, they actually didn't win enough seats in the election to win the majority. But... When they came that close, Democrats in the chamber started getting nervous and they started cutting deals and they started switching parties, handing the Republicans the majority. If the Democrats come that close in the House this fall, you could look for that bit of political history to perhaps repeat itself. We're sorry, 11 Alive political team, they're working to bring you in-depth analysis and perspective on the issues that matter most in your life. If you see something we should cover, email us at where Atlanta speaks at 11alive.com. A group rallying outside the Cobb County Detention Center today demanding justice for a man who died in custody. They want the DA's office to launch a criminal investigation into Kevin Wingo's death. A reveal investigation was first to expose the 2019 video of Wingo pleading for medical help inside the jail. A number of jail staffers heard him scream that he could not breathe. Instead of bringing him to the hospital, jail staff just put him alone in a padded room where he eventually died. Reveal investigator Andy Parati has reaction from the DA and the group demanding action. You have to go! You have to go! Within feet of the Cobb County Jail, Cadell Wingo's son holds a picture of his late father who died begging for help inside. Tiffany Wingo is Cavell's sister. All I want is justice for my brother, and I want everybody to be charged in the death of his murder. Like, he didn't have to die like that. Wingo's family, the NAACP, the ACLU, and State Representative David Wilkerson all demanding District Attorney Joy at Holmes launch a criminal investigation into his death after an 11 Alive Review investigation first discovered video of Wingo collapsing and slowly dying in the jail in September 2019 repeatedly heard screaming that he could not breathe. Everyone ignored his cries for pain. That has to stop. It is time for this Cobb County District Attorney to take our pleas seriously and to listen to Kevin Wingo and his family for the first time. We all saw the video. I don't think anybody thinks that video is acceptable. And he actually fell backwards onto the floor and then crawled to the window and was asking again, begging for help, and they could not breathe. His condition appeared so poor to some jail medical staff, they asked to help Wingo. The nurse in charge, Annalene Visser, said no. Me and the secretary, Tiana Bose, um, asked the charge nurse, Annalene, you know, hey, he's, he's asking for help, can we help? Yeah. She said no. Instead, they sent Wingo to a padded isolation room where he died an hour later. Hi, do you have a pad open? I got an idiot over here playing games. He's trying to get to the hospital, so he's just playing around. The nurses in charge of Wingo's care the night he died still work at the infirmary. It is absolutely unfathomable that these individuals have not been charged with crimes. The Cobb County District Attorney says she has records related to Mr. Wingo's death, but has not made a decision. Wingo's family says if the DA won't investigate, she should ask the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to do it. Sheriff Neil Warren, who runs the jail, declined to comment. While it appears people are spending less time at the hospital fighting COVID-19, the number of deaths associated with the virus is still pretty high. 
Today, the Department of Public Health announced 55 more people have died with COVID. To date, just over 4,900 Georgians have died. Today's state data shows the number of patients being treated at the hospital continues to fall. Demands for testing is also slowing down. About 21,000 test results were reported today. That's well below our average for the month. There were about 2,700 new COVID cases, so the virus is still spreading. That's raising concerns. Not enough people are getting tested to stop asymptomatic people from giving the virus to others. Classes were completely canceled for Polk County students all week after the district abruptly had to close down. The district said it had to figure out a better way to handle quarantine guidelines. Caitlin Ross is looking into what school will look like when it resumes next week. Students will now have a four day work week with Monday totally off. No virtual or in person instruction. Teachers will use Mondays as a workday to prepare lessons for kids, either virtually learning or kids in quarantine. In a letter sent home to parents, the district said they had to make the change because of the Department of Health guidance on quarantining school-aged children. In a new document, the State Department of Health recommends any child who has been within six feet of a positive COVID case for more than 15 minutes should stay home for 14 days, even if they get a negative test themselves. Because socially distancing is next to impossible for young kids, that often means the entire classroom would be quarantined. But we don't know how many students and teachers have tested positive for the virus in Polk County or how many people are currently in quarantine because the district won't tell us. They did not respond to multiple requests for comment yesterday or today. Online, though, they did answer parents' questions on their own Facebook page. Crystal wrote that the shift to four days a week will be difficult for a working parent, and she's worried how her child will adjust. The district responded that state mandates have made it impossible to plan for the school year, and the situation is out of their control. But not everyone was angry about the shift. Judy wrote in to thank the district for prioritizing the health and safety of the children. School will be back in session for Polk County kids Tuesday, August 25th. So Bartow County Schools confirmed with 11 Alive that a child tested positive for COVID-19 more than a week ago, more than a week and a half ago. They also say they were delayed notifying those who had come in contact with that child. 11 Alive's Brittany Kleinpeter spoke with a concerned mom and nurse who says her daughter was exposed and she didn't find out until yesterday. I was scared to death. We could have prevented all of this and all of these rushing thoughts that would go through my head if we'd have been notified sooner. Bartow County parent and nurse Tanya Frazier says she received a letter from the Department of Public Health on Wednesday saying her daughter had come into contact with a student at her school who had tested positive for the coronavirus over a week earlier. Frazier's daughter attends Cass Middle School, where officials say they followed the State Department of Public Health's protocol and compiled a list of people who had come into contact with that student when they found out about the case on August 11th. They then sent the list to DPH before sending an email to the student body notifying them about the positive case. In a statement from the middle school, they said that DHP made it very clear that they would take the school's tracing list and call those who needed to be quarantined. But Frazier says that didn't happen for days. My first question was, why are you just now notifying me? And they said that they were running about a week to a week and a half behind. In a statement from the health department, they said that per protocol, quarantine guidelines are to be given by the school to the family of the student being reported and DPH will follow up as quote soon as possible. I received a phone call yesterday and that's unacceptable because if any of these students do test positive, they've exposed everyone. Staff at Cass Middle School say that once they found out calls with DPH were delayed, they started calling people who had possibly come into contact with the virus. We are expecting our public health department to notify us and do their part in all of this. The Department of Public Health tells us they are still collecting data from the school and they cannot tell us just yet how many people total were impacted by that positive case. More than 180 people out of a home tonight after a fire destroys a Buckhead apartment complex. Next, we speak to two people picking up the pieces and get a look at what's being done to help them and so many others. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. More 11 Alive news in prime time after the break.
system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer you. The community coming together to help nearly 200 people forced out of their homes by a massive apartment fire in Buckhead. The flames quickly tearing through the building. The damage clearly evident as 11 Alive's sky tracker flew above it yesterday. And even the units not burned are closed off still because of the flooding from all the water it took to put out those flames. But as Latasha Givens shows us tonight, people are reaching out to help those who live there during a really tough time. Well, as of this afternoon, a total of 182 people are now displaced because of the fire, including a popular radio DJ. Now, fire officials say although there is only one injury, the damage is so bad, the building is now unlivable. And all of a sudden, um, my power goes out. But then I smell smoke. And I'm Media personality, radio god Stu from Hot 1079 says he went outside to investigate. I'm just hit with a big cloud of smoke right in my face. And I'm like, oh my God. And you can just feel the, the, the heat from the flames just coming, coming, coming. Stu was able to get out of the apartment building before it collapsed. I heard people screaming fire, um, but there were no alarms or anything. So I just kind of ignored it. Thought people were just playing. Chris Bondcar says he walked out and saw clouds of smoke billowing over Buckhead. I walked outside just in case. I looked up, but I saw um, the AC units were smoking. And as I was walking out, you heard a loud pop and the flames started going up. The Red Cross is now assisting the 182 people that are displaced with food, clothing and money. Residents tell us the complex has paid for them to stay in hotels for a week and is working to relocate them to available units on other properties. Um, they're offering uh, per diems per day for food and personal items. Ron Carr says he was finally able to pick up his car today from the parking garage. Stu says in a year with so many tragedies, this is a reminder to be prepared for anything. I like that you don't realize that things like this can happen at any given moment, you know, so you definitely want to um, be prepared for this, you know, make sure that you have like your important information, your important documents, you know, things like that, like ready accessible. And we're looking at the claims about some residents who told us they never actually heard the fire alarms go off. They tell us instead they either saw smoke or their power went out. Now, fire officials tell us when they arrived, the system was activated. We'll continue to follow the story. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers talking on Facebook. Still around 200 people on right now. A lot of people are sharing what they're experiencing up in North Georgia, where folks up in Batesville have said that it's pouring rain. A lot of folks up in Northeast Georgia are saying they're getting a lightning show up there with a lot of flashes of lightning. And since I left you a little while ago, 
Um, we, we now have more lightning strikes in North Georgia, so that system is kind of ramping up the lightning a little bit more. Now, I know we're watching storms in North Georgia, but they are pushing away. They're not coming toward Atlanta. They have already moved through Atlanta from earlier today. We have a break in the action right now. We had a few people in Gwinnett County on Facebook Live just confirm what we're seeing on radar here with some heavier showers moving through Lawrenceville at this hour, up into Barrow County and also up into Jackson County with some pockets of heavy rain. That's about to cross over 85 and 985 in just a little bit. Uh, and then more of that heavy rain, as you can see, the red is disappearing, but we still have a lot of yellow and orange indicating moderate rain and still some lightning with this. We're now back up to about 30 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes, where just a little bit earlier that was down in the teens. The heaviest action, though, most of the lightning is in the northern parts of White County, moving into Habersham County and Rabin County here, where we see that lightning. That's where it has kind of ramped up a little bit still with some of that heavier rain. And then on the south side, a little quieter, still just a few showers down there, but nothing heavy like what we had a little bit earlier. All right, let's take a look at uh, our live camera. This is in Blue Ridge. Uh, we had a few folks on Facebook Live mentioning Blue Ridge, saying that it's cloudy and rainy there. They're about to get a little more heavy shower activity. This is the view of the downtown area, and I've kind of pointed it down toward the street so you can see the reflection of the uh, traffic light there uh, from the wet roads. And again, we've got some folks walking around uh, down in Blue Ridge at this hour, but they're about to get some heavier rain that's going to be moving in in just a little bit. Now, the rain helped to cool things off today. Uh, we're only in the 70s right now, 72 in Atlanta, 73 in Athens. We even have some 60s on the map in Carrollton, Marietta, Canton, and Gainesville. That's what the rain does for you. It helps to cool things off a little bit. And tomorrow, uh, we're going to see some scattered showers redeveloping. Now, tonight, a lot of that's going to be diminishing, but even in the morning, Tomorrow's rain chance isn't going to be just the afternoon and evening variety of scattered showers. We may even have some showers in the morning hours at lunchtime, scattered showers, and in the afternoon, some scattered showers too. Should be diminishing through the evening hours. And then early on Saturday, we'll have a dry start to the day with a few clouds around. And then it goes back to that pattern of afternoon and evening showers here for your Saturday going into uh, Sunday about a 50% chance Saturday, 40% chance for showers here once we get into your Saturday as well. And just slightly lower rain chances for the weekend. We're not going to be rain free, but maybe not as many of those showers around. So here's the forecast for the next seven days. We see that 60% chance for showers on Friday, 50% chance on Saturday, and then down a little bit on Sunday to a 40% chance for showers and down a little bit more Monday to a 30% chance for showers with highs in the mid and upper 80s. Then we go back up to the uh, 40% chance Tuesday and Wednesday, 60% chance on Thursday. Coming up in our next half hour, I'm going to spend a little more time on the tropics to show you the two tropical depressions we're watching. Both of those could end up into the Gulf of Mexico, and that's why we're going with some higher rain chances next Thursday. I'm going to break down what we think is going to happen with those systems coming up in the next half hour. When it comes to football, one of the biggest fears related to COVID-19 is the long-term effects it can have, especially on the heart. As Alex Glaze tells us, one local college football player revealed today he's suffering from a heart condition after having the virus and will not be able to play this season. Eight months ago, Michaeli Colasudra was celebrating the end of his high school football career after winning a state championship. Today, the Georgia State freshman put out a statement on social media saying that he's been diagnosed with a heart condition as a result of a COVID-19 infection. He added, he will not be playing football this season. Joining me now is Dr. Sujatha Reddy, our medical expert. Dr. Reddy, we've heard of heart conditions being linked to COVID-19. How much do we know about the long-term effects of COVID-19 and what and how it can affect the heart? As far as the long-term effects, I'm not sure anyone can answer that because this is a novel or new virus we're gonna have to see. But with a lot of heart muscle inflammation infections that we see have seen in the past, we know some people recover and some people don't. What's the current prognosis for heart-related conditions when it comes to uh, COVID-19? So, you know, the prognosis is going to depend on if that person's heart muscle recovers fully or not. There are objective tests that can be done to assess is the heart back to its full, you know, um, ability or is it somewhat weakened because of a viral infection. But as far as the prognosis, it's really going to depend person to person. There are a lot of people who may not have any long term effects on their heart from coronavirus, and there may be some who do. 
The final night of the DNC has Atlanta in the spotlight. I caught up with Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms ahead of her speech tonight to talk about this big moment and what it means for the city. That's next. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home. Tonight is the final night of the DNC. Joe Biden will officially accept his nomination as the Democratic Party's candidate for president. Some other speakers include many who were part of the Democratic race, like Senator Cory Booker, Andrew Yang, and Pete Buttigieg. But there will be a spotlight on Atlanta with Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms on the speaker's roster. I got the chance to talk to her as she prepared to address millions of people all across the country. It is such an honor to be a part of this, uh, an, a personal honor to be invited to speak, but it really speaks to the value that the nation sees in Atlanta. Uh, to have a mayor of Atlanta as a part of this historic night is really something that should be celebrated um, that our city should be proud of. Mayor of Atlanta speaking on a huge night like that at the DNC, the mayor who was also on the short list for VP. Tell us about that day for you and when the announcement came out that Kamala Harris was Joe Biden's VP pick. Uh, as I would watch television and read stories and the speculation, and I would think they don't have any idea what's happening in this process. But again, out of 330 million folks in America, to be a part of the process was an honor. The fact that Kamala Harris was chosen, and this is such a, a historic moment for us as a country, the fact that there will be a woman, and then on top of that, a woman of color um, on the ticket, and I know they're gonna win in November, is something that we should all celebrate. And I'm so very excited uh, for the direction and the opportunity we have to go in a different course in this country. You've heard it time and time again. This is one of the most historic elections. People say it is one of the most important. How do you think the virtual aspect is going to change, even with you having to prepare to deliver that speech, not in person? But I think what we see happening with the convention is representative of 2020. Nothing's been normal 
about 2020. But that being said, I, I got chills watching the roll call from the various states. It was so moving and seeing the stories and having an opportunity for a cross section of people to be a visible part of the convention. I think it's a silver lining in all of this. And I would venture to say it's given people across the country an opportunity to feel a part of the convention um, in a way that they otherwise might not feel if they weren't in Milwaukee. So we know you've been going hard for Joe Biden for quite a while and Atlanta still has a mayor named Keisha, but could we have a mayor who becomes a part of the Biden cabinet should the Dems bring this home in November? You know, I haven't gotten that far. I mean, I there's a really big job uh, that I have right now, and that's being mayor of Atlanta. And so we'll get to November. We'll see what happens in November. But my focus continues to be on our city and to continue to do the job I was elected to do. If you want to hear more from our interview, the entire thing is posted right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Coming up, he gives back to the community by holding funerals for people who can't afford one. In a pandemic, his job is more important than ever, but there are a lot of obstacles in the way. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. passionate response tonight from one of Georgia's top medical professionals to Governor Brian Kemp after the governor defended the state's COVID-19 response. This morning on CNN, Dr. Sancha Gupta shared his thoughts on Governor Kemp's response to a White House Coronavirus Task Force report. The report indicates that Georgia has the highest COVID-19 case rate in the country. Yesterday, Governor Kemp said that people need to look at all the numbers, including hospitalizations, to get a better idea of what's going on in our state. 
But Dr. Gupta says there's a lot more than the numbers. We opened so early that even the president was sort of shocked Georgia's already opening. When we opened, we opened bars and nail salons and bowling alleys, had no regard for what was going to happen in the fall with schools. Uh, we have the fastest, the quickest pace of acceleration of new cases. We have the highest per capita cases in the country, perhaps in the world right now when it comes to Georgia. The, this governor expressed seemingly genuine surprise that this virus could spread asymptomatically despite the fact that people already knew this for weeks or for months. He, he uh, has not put a statewide mask mandate in and has threatened uh, mayors with lawsuits who do that. I mean, these are the facts. This is what my governor is doing for the people that I live with, my family, in this state. So he wants people to have all the information. It's a disaster here in Georgia, Governor. I mean, nothing has gone right, and you've actually condemned and maligned the people who've actually tried to do something. By the way, Dr. Gupta is from Georgia. He, has an associate, he is an associate professor of neurosurgery at Emory University Hospital, an associate chief of neurosurgery at Grady, and he was elected to the National Academy of Medicine. We have more details on the White House report on 11alive.com, plus a breakdown of the state's latest COVID-19 numbers every single day. The easiest way to find that is by downloading the 11 Alive app. A Union City man is back home with his family for the first time in months. The husband and father have been in the hospital battling COVID since April. Natisha Lance has his story of recovery. It's the day Derek Duncan and his family prayed for. They were all smiles as the 54 year old was discharged from Emory Hospital after a three month battle with COVID-19. I was able to leave the hospital and finally I was able to come back home to my family. The raspy whisper of his voice comes as a result of nearly two months on a respirator. The father of five with no underlying issues says he started feeling sick after taking a road trip to Ohio. He was rushed to Emory Hospital on April 28th. As soon as I got to Emory, I was, I couldn't breathe and they admitted me and put me on a respirator. He spent several weeks in the ICU without his family being able to see or speak to him. Not being able to hear somebody and see what kind of struggle they're going through or what kind of pain they're going through, um, it's pretty hard. At times, Duncan didn't know if he'd pull through, but his family stayed prayerful. My family prayed a lot. And the doctors at Emory also. Now that he's back home, it's still a long road to recovery. He's not able to walk on his own, and his voice is still healing. He says he looks forward to doing the little things again, like walking his dog and simply being independent. He's a fighter, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be back on his feet in no time. Duncan wants others to take this disease seriously and please stay out of large crowds. Those showers up in North Georgia still holding together with moderate, even some pockets of heavy rain, but we are watching the lightning count up in North Georgia start to come down just a little bit. Now, these showers that are in North Georgia now have already come through Atlanta. They're not moving our way. They're actually moving away from Atlanta, pushing toward the north from the south to the north here. We've got a break in the rain right now. We do have clouds and the roads are still wet. It's just very damp out there and still watching some of these showers kind of left behind from that main line here, bringing in some heavier rain along the I-85 area up in Gwinnett County at the 985 split as well there between Lawrenceville and Sugar Hill. Some of that's going to be moving over Lake Lanier in just a few minutes, but just additional rain, nothing uh, strong or, or anything like that. Now, these storms up in North Georgia are calming down a little bit. Right now, we have about 17 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Most of that is from northern White County on up into Rabin County, where we see that lightning just to the south and west of Clayton. A couple of lightning strikes here in Union County, and then no lightning in Gilmer, Gordon, or into Murray County, but we still have some pretty heavy rain there. There's that lightning right now that you see just to the west of Clayton and north of Helen, but that's moving to the north. So we will see some breaks in the action here for the rest of the evening hours or overnight hours tonight. A couple of spotty showers still over on the east side. And I know you're probably look, looking at this in Alabama, wondering if that's moving our way. It's not. It's going to pretty much rain itself out over right along I-59 and actually push up toward the north and west. Take a live look out there right now. This is our live camera up in Blue Ridge in the mountains where we see some of those rain showers. You see the wet roads. Nothing particularly heavy right now in Blue Ridge. They still have that 
area of more moderate rain that's going to be moving in. So we'll keep an eye on that Blue Ridge camera for the next little while to see if that rain gets any heavier there. Stay with us. We'll talk about additional rain chances for tomorrow, and we're going to spend a little more time in the tropics uh, to kind of break down what's happening there with those two tropical depressions. There's a timely effort to help food and secure families amid this unprecedented time of layoffs and furloughs. The Atlanta Community Food Bank opening its first ever food center in Gwinnett County today. Nick started in reports from Stone Mountain with more on how many meals it plans to distribute and the big name rapper who helped make it possible. Behind me is the 14,000 square foot facility that will help distribute food to families across Metro Atlanta in the first year. The goal is to give out more than 500,000 meals. This morning was the grand opening for the new community food center. This is the first ever food center Atlanta Community Food Bank has opened in Gwinnett County. They told me the reason they chose this area is because this is such a big county, which is now projected to have a more than 14% food insecurity rate because of the coronavirus pandemic, which according to Feeding America's Map the Mill Gap study is more than the national average of 11.5% back in 2018. There were gaps in our distribution network. Uh, we needed to find ways and strategies for filling those gaps. Uh, and that led to the idea of opening up uh, food pantries, community food centers, and right now the food center is only open by appointment only, but you can call the Atlanta Community Food Bank to schedule an appointment. Six founding donors making generous gifts to help make this food center on Parker Court and Stone Mountain a reality. Atlanta rapper Offset, one third of the Migos and husband of Cardi B is one of them, giving back to the county where he grew up. Well, the NBA playoffs continue as the league tries to keep the coronavirus off the court. And a big part of that is the creation of these bubbles so the players can't leave the area. So we wanted to take a closer look at how they actually work and if they can be applied to other sports or to our communities. When the game stopped and the courts were emptied, no one knew when or if professional sports were going to come back. Then the NBA had an interesting idea. Separate your players completely and the teams from the rest of the world. Basically create a sports bubble. It was an experiment, and so far it's paid off. So how exactly does this bubble work? Well, there are a lot of procedures in place to make sure the bubble doesn't burst. In the NBA's case, there are 132 pages of safeguards. Dr. Jason Wilson from Tampa General says this plan wasn't just thrown together overnight. The NBA's actually had quite a bit of thought process behind this in terms of the lead-in. you got to make sure that people are sort of pre-screened, uh, that people were come into the bubble essentially viral-free. So first you need an environment where the virus doesn't exist. That means before coming in, every person had to isolate for several days and get two negative tests. Once inside the bubble, though, life isn't that normal. Dr. Wilson says you still need to have the best public health initiatives in place, and there still needs to be social distancing, regular testing, limited movement, and different phases. So even if you've created a world where people aren't testing positive for the disease, you still need preemptive measures because the virus is going to try and get in. If there's not high transmission going on between people, there's not much the virus can do, right? It's, it relies on us to transmit the virus and to help the virus reproduce and propagate it and make more virus. And if we're not helping the virus do that, then the virus has no business being there. The bubble idea is working in the NBA so far, but could we apply it to towns or even whole states? Here's the, here's the simple truth is I don't know if it'll work, and we don't know if it's going to work because we haven't done this really before. One of the big differences Dr. Wilson pointed out was the NBA has created an environment without social stress. Players don't need to leave the bubble for food or work. It's all provided, and it would be tough to create that scenario in a community. By the way, teams are coming up with, uh, anyway, creative ways to keep those sports going. Today, just today, Clayton County Public Schools announced that they will not allow fans at school or sporting events until further notice. Student athletes in the district start back up on Monday. Georgia Tech and UGA will limit the amount of fans in the stands this fall. And on the, uh, the pro level, the fans will not be able to attend Atlanta United or Falcons games in September. A back to school rap is helping spread a lot of joy, much joy, not just for the internet, but for a community that was one of the hardest hit by COVID-19. We spoke with one of the, the teachers about rapping next.
fort. Man, I want it all to myself, no share. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest. Chaplain in Fulton County is showing what it means to serve your community. For years now, he's performed funerals for those who can't afford it and help feed the hungry. And even during those really tough times, he tells 11 Alive's Matt Pearl his mission is to keep doing what he can. Let us pray. Two days a week. Almighty and gracious God. Almighty and gracious Father. 400 times a year. We pray now. So we pray now for every good and precious gift. Reverend Clifton Dawkins says the same prayer. Mercy. Mercy for your mercy. For a person he's never met whose face he hasn't seen. There is a place where there'll be no more sickness. But that prayer. No more pain. That gesture matters. I think all human beings deserve a measure of dignity especially in death. Dawkins is the chaplain director for Fulton County. He performs burials for those who cannot afford one. Face to face in your glory. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, his schedule has filled up. Whatever race or whatever religion, pain is still the same. Sadness and, and, and tears are still the same. The pandemic has meant more services here and here. There's a need. Dawkins owns a humble building on Atlanta's west side. <laughs> Two days a week here, he serves meals and gives clothes to whoever comes. 300 people at the church, there's no judgment. There's no, let me save you first before I can help you. This pandemic has had an effect financially, economically. I know what it feels like to be hungry, uh, to be homeless, to feel like no one cares. When you have empathy for that, 
then something with that within you will push you. At a time of isolation, Dawkins is driven by empathy. It's why he still ran the grill last Saturday, even after what happened last Tuesday. Our church got broken into, um, stole a lot of equipment and things that we have. And, and so I had to really do some prayer about feeding this Saturday, but I knew I was going to do it. People are really desperate. So the feedings and the drives go on. And two days a week. God, we know that you are able. 400 times a year. To comfort those hearts and sadness. Clifton Dawkins says that same prayer with that same purpose. One of my uncles told me we should do all that we can while we can. Because when we can't, how can we? So I just try to do all that I can while I'm here. An amazing story there. By the way, Dawkins says that he spends tens of thousands of dollars of his own money every single year to fund the food and clothing giveaways. This year, because of COVID-19, that number will increase. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, where things are getting better here in Atlanta, where the rain has moved up toward the north. And for the rest of the night, we'll mainly see dry conditions here in our area. That heavier rain has pushed up to the north side as well. We're doing well here. You know, we've got a little bit of rain still in Gwinnett County right there at the 85 and 985 split between Buford, uh, also the uh, Mala, Georgia area up towards Sugar Hill, moving here to the south end of Lake Lanier, parts of Hall County. Uh, a little heavier rain up 85 into near Commerce there in Jackson County, but not any thunder and lightning, just a little pocket of heavier rain. The main organization of heavier showers is diminishing somewhat over North Georgia and we're watching the lightning count come down to now only 17 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Just a little while ago it was more than 50, but we still have some moderate and pockets of heavy rain there and that's moving up to the north. It's not moving toward us. This is all that's left of that lightning now in Raven County, the northern parts of um, White County, southern parts of Union and Towns counties as well with a little bit of that lightning too and that uh, is moving on up to the north. Now Blue Ridge is right up here. I want to uh, give you another look at our tower cam here uh, up in the Blue Ridge area where you can see here that we still have the wet roads, a little bit of rain coming down in Blue Ridge, but it's not particularly uh, that heavy out there right now. Check out the Almanac. Our high today actually below average. We were at 84. We should be at 88. You can thank the rain for cooling us off a little bit. We picked up about a third of an inch of rain. Now our surplus is back uh, to 11 inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. So this rainy pattern is going to continue for the next couple of days with scattered showers, and that's going to keep those temperatures in the low to mid 80s and we still have a very active situation going on in the tropics right now. Here's a look at one tropical depression that is in the Caribbean. Here's another tropical depression that's out in the Atlantic. Uh, both of these have the potential to become a become tropical storms. Whichever one becomes a tropical storm first will be named Laura and then the one after that will be Marco. So let's start with this one. This is tropical depression 13 area of low pressure out in the Atlantic and it's getting closer to the islands where we do have tropical storm watches in effect for the US and British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico as well and the uh, many of the other islands there. We do think that it'll be kind of skirting north of Puerto Rico on Sunday and then potentially becoming a hurricane in South Florida by Monday and then maybe even moving into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, please know this is way out. This is most likely going to change. One of our models is not showing this getting up to hurricane strength at all. So we'll be fine tuning this intensity forecast as well as the path. But this is important to us because if this then turns north and goes into the Gulf of, into the panhandle, we could see some remnants of that later next week, which will bring us rain and maybe some storms. But that's all based on this current track that could change. We also have another system. This could become a tropical storm as well. This is showing it moving up to Toward Texas on Tuesday. Yes, did you, you remember that Tuesday in Texas and Tuesday in the Panhandle? We might have two tropical systems in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time next week. And then there's yet another system we're watching off the coast of Africa. Uh, this one will have about a 50% chance of developing over the next five days. Uh, and this is the time of year when things get more active. So we've got a high tomorrow of 83, 60% chance for showers. And then we're down to a 50% chance Saturday, 40% chance Sunday, and then a 30% chance Monday. So gradually those rain chances coming down a little bit each day. And when the chances are lower on Monday, we'll be up to around 88, warming up a little more. 40% chance Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday's forecast, right now we're saying a 60% chance for showers, but that all depends on if we get any moisture that moves our way from those tropical systems that would be down to the south.
Two Georgia teachers made two videos meant to calm fears and nerves and bring some fun back to students. It has been shared thousands of times in the last 24 hours. The teachers tell our Cheryl Preheim the students at Monroe Comprehensive are so excited they've been logging in early to virtual class. What's pop? What a start to the year. Your videos have gone all over the world already. Completely viral. Text messages, emails. It has just been so overwhelming. <laughs> Brand new year and I'm locked. Kelly Evans and Adriana Williams are the high school teachers behind the What's Poppin' videos for a memorable start to a virtual school year. COVID-19 ain't worried about a thing when the economy ain't no stop. Hey. <laughs> Needless to say, we are very happy. What was the best part of putting it all together? Getting the choreography together with our cheerleaders, going to the studio and actually recording and actually feeling like we're real rappers. It is actually really fun. On the south, we do more than rap. Doing all we can just to get you out of the trap. A blast, but it had a bigger purpose too. Your students, your community have been through so much. I had so many kids who, you know, would email me and say, Mrs. Williams, I'm sorry, but I can't do my work. I have COVID. My dad just passed away. Albany is a small city. When the pandemic started, their community of 75,000 in Southwest Georgia was the hot zone, hit harder than almost any other city in the United States. People knew all of those that passed away. If it's somebody that I uh, I teach and they're hurting, then that means I'm hurting too. They wanted to lift everyone's spirits. You can overcome adversity, you know, no matter what you're going through, you can always strive to be the best. And so I think this rap has really done that. The students love it. You know, Miss Evans don't play. And I just feel like the morale of the city is continuing to go up. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
Well, the Texas megastore chain Bucky's is planning to build a second location right here in Georgia. So this is really exciting news for fans of the stores, known for their clean restrooms, specialty foods, and regional treats. Construction is already underway for their Warner Robins store. Our partners at the Atlanta Business Chronicle reports that Bucky's is now planning a second store in Calhoun, close to Interstate 75. It's set to open up August 2021. And we're watching those showers that are going to be with us again at any time during the day tomorrow, not just the afternoon and evening variety of storms. They could even be in the morning as well. And then Saturday back to the afternoon and evening variety with a 50% chance and then slightly lower rain chances Sunday and Monday. And then the end of next week, we'll be watching if we get any type of moisture coming in from those tropical systems, depending on where they go. All right, stick around. Prime time rose on at 10. This to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms taking the spotlight at the Democratic National Convention. Her message on this historic final night. And classes canceled for one North Georgia County because of COVID-19. The guidelines the district is working on before school reopens next week. Plus, a family wants to bury their loved one after his death, but the only person who can give them permission is his former wife, now charged in his murder. Tonight is the final night of the Democratic National Convention. Within the hour, Joe Biden will officially accept his nomination as the Democratic Party's candidate for president. But before that, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, one of many speakers in the spotlight tonight, she spoke just under four minutes, highlighting Atlanta's history as the cradle of the civil rights movement. 
The baton has now been passed to each of us. We've cried out for justice. We have gathered in our streets to demand change. And now we must pass on the gift John Lewis sacrificed to give us. We must register and we must vote. Mayor Bottoms also blasted those who, according to her, are using the COVID-19 pandemic to spread misinformation and to interfere with voting. You heard Mayor Bottoms mention the late Congressman John Lewis immediately following her speech. The DNC played a nearly five minute video dedicated to the civil rights icon. Here's a small piece of that moving tribute. Through the thunder and the rain Together All the struggle and the pain Together Can't you see we are the same Our freedom can't wait another day So together let's fight 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 for what's right Fight for what's right No matter how long no. The voice of John Legend later joined by Common as they performed the Oscar winning song Glory in honor of John Lewis. Now on to the very latest in Georgia politics. Publicly, state Democrats are still saying they can win control of the state House of Representatives, but behind the scenes, they may be focusing on 2022. 11 Alive's Doug Richards looks into what Democrats are really saying about flipping the House. Republicans took control of the state house from Georgia Democrats in the 2004 election and have held it ever since. Democrats have been saying they hope to be able to take control back in this election. But can they really? Sharon Cooper is a target. So is Deborah Silcox. They're both suburban Republican members of the Georgia House of Representatives. They're trying to keep their seats in the face of some well-organized Democratic opposition in a year when Democrats are feeling ambitious. We have many opportunities here in Georgia, two U.S. Senate races, our 16 electoral college votes, and Doug, we're gonna flip the State House of Representatives. So we have many opportunities here. That was Democratic Party Chair Nakima Williams earlier this month. In 2016, Republicans had 56 more House seats than Democrats did. In 2018, Democrats cut that margin nearly in half. Now Democrats would need to flip 15 more seats to achieve a tie. But a Democratic-leaning fundraising site called Act Blue lists only 13 Democratic House challengers, two seats short of a tie, in what it describes as an effort to flip the House, saying actually flipping either chamber is a pretty tall order and that they might have to finish the job in 2022. Yet a Georgia Democratic Party spokeswoman says the party is still confident that we can flip the state house this year. The Democrats will pick up seats. Will they get enough to flip the house? It's going to be a close call and we'll only know when all the votes are counted. When Republicans flipped the state Senate nearly 18 years ago, they actually didn't win enough seats in the election to win the majority. But when they came that close, Democrats in the chamber started getting nervous and they started cutting deals and they started switching parties, handing the Republicans the majority. If the Democrats come that close in the House this fall, you could look for that bit of political history to perhaps repeat itself. Doug has a great little background there. You see that uh, that Fez over there as well. That's a new addition. The entire 11 Alive political team is working to bring you in-depth analysis and perspective on the issues that most impact your life. If you see something we should cover, very easy to contact us. Email at whereatlspeaks at 11alive.com. Well, switching to our forecast right now, we're tracking more rain tonight. Let's check out this video from one of our storm trackers. This one's from Judith Cates coming in from Austell. Let's get you straight to Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb in the 11 Alive Storm Tracker Center with all that color behind you. You're lighting up, Chris. Yeah, a lot of folks saw rain like that today where that was very heavy at times with thunder and lightning. Thank goodness we didn't have anything widespread severe in our area. We did have one severe thunderstorm warning a little bit earlier down to the south and to the east of us. Now we have rain in North Georgia and I know normally when you see this on radar, you would think that that's coming our way. This is actually moving away. These showers today have been moving from the south to the north. So you see 
see that heavier rain up in North Georgia is actually going to push up into Tennessee and North Carolina. Earlier, we did have thunder and lightning that came through Atlanta that moved away. We have a couple little lingering showers here in Gwinnett. That's now moving over on the south end of Lake Lanier right now. And now those heavier showers that have been covering North Georgia for much of the evening, those are weakening and moving away as well. Look at this. Now only four lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Just in the 8 o'clock hour, we had about 50 or plus lightning strikes in this in a 15 minute period. So that's just showing us that this is weakening as it continues to move up to the north. Here's a little bit of that lightning right there in Rabin County, also into parts of towns or Union County as well, but that's moving away. Now here in Atlanta, we are drying out and we should stay quiet for the rest of the nighttime hours, but we will see showers that will be redeveloping again during the day tomorrow. We'll talk more about that as well as let you know what's happening with a very active few systems down in the tropics. Chris, thank you. New tonight, a heartbreaking story. This is a, a struggle for a Gwinnett County family. Their loved one was stabbed to death and adding to the pain, they were told the only person who could give them permission to bury him was the person charged in his death. Brett Zachary was killed on Monday in what police call a domestic altercation. Investigators arrested Brett's wife of two years, Roxanne Woodard Zachary. She's charged with voluntary manslaughter. The family tried to bury Brett, but the medical examiner said his body couldn't be released because they were not listed as the next of kin. They said that the body was ready to be picked up, but I needed to contact his wife, which was the next of kin. And I'm like, I don't think that that's a good idea for me to have contact with her. Tonight at 11 on 11 Alive on Up Late, we talked to Brett's sister. She relives the moment she had to go to the jail, pleading to the woman charged in the case to release her brother's body. While it appears people are spending less time at the hospital fighting off COVID-19, the number of deaths associated with the virus remains very high. Today, the Department of Public Health announced 55 more people have died with COVID. Today, just over 4,900 Georgians have died. Today, state data shows the number of patients being treated at the hospital continues to fall. Demand for testing also slowing. About 21,000 test results were reported today. That's well below our average for the month. There were about 2,700 new COVID cases. So the virus is still spreading. That's raising concerns. Not enough people are getting tested to stop a symptomatic people from giving the virus to others. Classes were completely canceled for Polk County students all this week after the district abruptly closed down. The district said it had to figure out a better way to handle quarantine guidelines. Caitlin Ross is looking into what school is going to look like when it resumes next week. Students will now have a four day work week with Monday totally off. No virtual or in person instruction. Teachers will use Mondays as a work day to prepare lessons for kids, either virtually learning or kids in quarantine. In a letter sent home to parents, the district said they had to make the change because of the Department of Health guidance on quarantining school aged children. In a new document, the State Department of Health recommends any child who has been within six feet of a positive COVID case for more than 15 minutes should stay home for 14 days, even if they get a negative test themselves. Because socially distancing is next to impossible for young kids, that often means the entire classroom would be quarantined. But we don't know how many students and teachers have tested positive for the virus in Polk County or how many people are currently in quarantine because the district won't tell us. They did not respond to multiple requests for comment yesterday or today. Online, though, they did answer parents' questions on their own Facebook page. Crystal wrote that the shift to four days a week will be difficult for a working parent, and she's worried how her child will adjust. The district responded that state mandates have made it impossible to plan for the school year, and the situation is out of their control. But not everyone was angry about the shift. Judy wrote in to thank the district for prioritizing the health and safety of the children. School will be back in session for Polk County kids Tuesday, August 25th. New tonight at 10, the FBI now offering a $10,000 reward in the search for a Georgia mom. Layla Cavett was last seen at a Florida gas station on July 25th. Her two-year-old son was found the next day wandering alone in South Florida. Investigators charged Shannon Ryan with kidnapping. U.S. jobless claims surging past 1 million this week. That's after two weeks of declining numbers. But here in Georgia, those first time claims continue to drop, falling to just over 58,000 last week. Georgia's unemployment rate is 7.6 percent. That's lower than the national rate, which has tripled since the beginning of the pandemic. 
No more house parties for Airbnb. Hmm. Airbnb now banning parties and events at its listings worldwide. Starting tomorrow, the company is capping occupancy at 16. The move follows a crackdown on house parties right here in Atlanta. The company says it had to remove more than 50 Atlanta listings after complaints and policy violations. One of President Trump's former advisors facing fraud charges. Up next, how the president is responding to Steve Bannon's indictment. You are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to... Steve Bannon, a former advisor to President Trump, is under arrest today and facing fraud charges for his involvement in a private fundraiser to build a border wall. NBC's Jeff Bennett has the latest. Another former Trump campaign boss tonight facing federal charges. Steve Bannon, once a top aide to President Trump, his first chief strategist in the White House, arrested off the coast of Connecticut this morning aboard a 150-foot yacht he does not own. Prosecutors say the 66-year-old, along with three others, raised more than $25 million in a campaign they said would go entirely to build sections of the southern border wall. Everything that this company is, is doing to build the wall, it's all to support President Trump and what President Trump's trying to do to get a physical barrier on the southern border. If you join it and we get it out to your friends, it'll be a multiplier and we'll actually not just get a wall built, we'll save this country. But the government says they actually took hundreds of thousands of dollars for themselves. Bannon's virtual arraignment today captured in this court sketch. Steve Bannon was one of the architects of President Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. Mr. Trump distancing himself from Bannon today when pressed by NBC News. Mr. President, what's your reaction to the indictment of your former campaign aide, Steve Bannon? Well, I feel very badly. I haven't been dealing with him for a long period of time, as most of the people in this room know. Uh, he was involved in our campaign. He worked for Goldman Sachs. He worked, worked for a lot of companies, but he was involved likewise in our campaign and uh, for a small part of the administration very early on. I haven't been dealing with him at all. Uh, I know nothing about the project other than I didn't like, when I read about it, I didn't like it. I said, this is for government, this isn't for private people. And it sounded to me like showboating, and I think I let my opinion be very strongly stated at the time. I didn't like it, it was showboating and maybe looking for funds, but you'll have to see what happens. Uh, I think it's a, a very sad thing for Mr. Bannon. Respectfully, sir, it's not just Steve Bannon, it's Roger Stone, it's Michael Flynn, it's Rick Gates, Paul Manafort, Michael Cohen. What's it say about your judgment that these are the kind of people? Well, I have no idea. Them? While President Trump says he knew nah. nothing about the fundraising effort, longtime ally Chris Kobach told the New York Times in an interview last year, the president said the project has my blessing and you can tell the media that. Well, Chris Kobach so says I you didn't, I didn't know, I didn't project? know that. I didn't know about uh, Bannon's involvement it was something that I very much uh, felt was inappropriate to be doing. 
Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb joins us again. And Chris, the rain, uh, really an issue today, depending on where you were in Metro Atlanta, you could be within three to four miles and it would be radically different from where you were at that moment, maybe 10 minutes prior. Yeah, in Atlanta, we picked up a third of an inch of rain today, but there are many other places that got up to two and three inches of rain. It just all depends on if you were under one of those heavier showers. That's the sporadic nature of some of these showers that came through. We're watching those showers and storms still up in parts of North Georgia and Northeast of us. Those have already come through Atlanta. They're moving to the north. So they're moving out. We actually are drying out here in Atlanta right now. No active rain coming down at this hour, and I think we'll be okay for the rest of the nighttime hours. We still have these showers though to the north, and then these in northeast Georgia, a little bit of thunder and lightning with this right on the Jackson, Gwinnett, and also the Barrow County line right here, where we see some of that uh, thunder and lightning that is moving through uh, that continues to move up toward the north, and some heavier rain right there, uh, just right over Lake Lanier near Gainesville with some of those heavier showers moving into Dawson, also into White County. And then you see some of these showers and storms that are heavy closer to the South Carolina line as you get toward Comer, Sandy Cross, over near Hartwell, and also Elberton, and those are moving to the north. These in North Georgia no longer have as much lightning. There's just a couple little, a few little lightning strikes right there uh, on the line as you get into Clay County, North Carolina, coming from uh, Towns County. Uh, continuing to push up into North Carolina. And then on the south side, things are drier now, calming down, and that's going to be the story for the rest of the night as that drier weather moves in. Take a look out there right now. This is our tower cam uh, that we see up in Blue Ridge. Uh, some light rain coming down now still in Blue Ridge. You see that the streets are wet. I don't know if y'all can see this right here. That's a, one of the puddles there on the side of the road. A couple of raindrops coming in there, so you can see that the rain is still actively coming down. Look at these clouds. Craig Nassau and Acula sent us those ominous looking clouds. And then I want to show you this one because I've had numerous reports tonight of people telling me that they saw, hey, did I see a funnel? Did I see a tornado developing? This is a picture from Brian Ott in um, Holly Springs, and I know that looks kind of scary thinking that that might be a funnel cloud or a tornado developing. This is actually a scud cloud, which is a low hanging cloud coming from the base of clouds. There was no wall cloud with this, no rotation. So this was not a funnel or a tornado developing, but I know it looks scary to a lot of people, but these are harmless, nothing to be worried about. But thank you for sending us that um, picture there tonight. We will see those showers diminishing some overnight, but then in the morning we have the potential for some scattered showers. So tomorrow's rain chance is not just the afternoon and evening variety. We could see some in the morning at lunchtime as well as in the afternoon, some of those scattered showers around. And then on Saturday, I do think we go back to that afternoon and evening variety of showers. I think it'll be dry for the first part of the day, Saturday and at lunchtime. But then in the afternoon, that's when we'll see some of those scattered showers that will develop here on Saturday as well. I want to take you down to the tropics. We have two tropical depressions to talk about. We're going to get a new advisory in on these within the hour, and we'll have that for you tonight on up late. This is one of the tropical depressions, tropical depression 13. Uh, it's having a hard time time getting organized. We think it'll become a tropical storm tomorrow. We do have tropical storm watches in effect for the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, also into Puerto Rico and many other islands there too. We think this will be north of Puerto Rico on Saturday and then moving near the southern Bahamas, maybe becoming a hurricane in South Florida on Monday, potentially moving into the Gulf of Mexico as a category one hurricane on Tuesday. This track is very important to us because if it curves north, we can have some remnants and increase our rain chances for Wednesday and Thursday. But this track is not set in stone. It's going to be changing as well as that intensity forecast. We're not even convinced that's going to become a hurricane. Another tropical depression moving into the Gulf again, a landfall on Tuesday, the same day we may have tropical systems in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time next week. This one should stay as a tropical storm, but we'll watch to see if it has any impacts on Texas and Louisiana. Here are our rain chances, 60% chance um, tonight, actually tomorrow, 50% chance Saturday, down to 40% Sunday, down again Monday to 30%, then back up to 40% Tuesday and Wednesday with highs in the 80s. And again, watching Thursday, depending on what happens with the remnants of those systems, will determine whether or not we get extra rain chances by the middle and end of next week. Take a look at your weather wow moment for the day. This is from Nikki Smith in Mineral Bluff. This is a rainbow that uh, Nikki captured yesterday in the Mineral Bluff area. Beautiful picture there of a full rainbow. I like that. We love to see your weather wow moments. Um, and we get these a lot of times from our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers. You can be one on Facebook. Just search 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Ask to become a member and answer the questions there. We'll let you in. And you can also share your weather information with us. A back to school wrap helped spread so much joy, not just for the internet, but for a community that was one of the hardest hit by COVID-19. We talk with the rapping teachers about it. You'll see it next.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We Yesterday, we showed you the viral videos. Two Georgia teachers bringing some fun to students with a back to school wrap. Today, Cheryl Preheim got a chance to talk to those teachers. They say the students at Monroe Comprehensive are so excited. They have those students logging in early to virtual class. <laughs> What's pop? What a start to the year. Your videos have gone all over the world already. Completely viral. Text messages, emails. It has just been so overwhelming. Brand new year and I'm locked in. Kelly Evans and Adriana Williams are the high school teachers behind the What's Poppin' videos for a memorable start to a virtual school year. COVID-19 ain't worried about a thing when the economy ain't no stopping. <laughs> Needless to say, we are very happy. What was the best part of putting it all together? Getting the choreography together with our cheerleaders, going to the studio and actually recording and actually feeling like we're real rappers. It is actually really fun. Oh. On the we do more than rap. Do we can't just to get you out the trap. A blast, but it had a bigger purpose too. Your students, your community have been through so much. I had so many kids who, you know, would email me and say, Mrs. Williams, I'm sorry, but I can't do my work. I have COVID. My dad just passed away. Albany is a small city. When the pandemic started, their community of 75,000 in Southwest Georgia was the hot zone, hit harder than almost any other city in the United States. People knew all of those that passed away. If it's somebody that I uh, I teach and they're hurting, then that means I'm hurting too. They wanted to lift everyone's spirits. You can overcome adversity, you know, no matter what you're going through, you can always strive to be the best. And so I think this rap has really done that. The students love it. You know, Miss Evans don't play. And I just feel like the morale of the city is continuing to go up. And it's just something about those ladies, seeing them outside <laughs> of the video. They just look like they carry the most beautiful spirits and the students just gravitate to them. So that's awesome, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they've answered the calling in their life, and that is to lead children and to be with them. And that is a great example of lifting their spirits. And, you know, I was, I was looking at them thinking, you know, I, I wish I had a talent like that. It would be great to be able to do your job and then to know you can do something else. Jeff, we can go to the booth. We can be rappers for a day. I could Come detail on. your car. That would be about <laughs> my only skill. <laughs> All right. Well, happy Friday Eve to you, Jeff. I'll see you back tomorrow. All right, Aisha. Thanks. Here's what's coming up on the Big 36, where news is king. The community is now giving back by holding funerals for people who can't afford one in a pandemic. This is the story of a man and his job. It's more important than ever before. A lot of obstacles but he is still there to help. We'll tell you a story when we come back.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation. New tonight, two nurses are now on administrative leave following the death of a man while in custody inside the Cobb County Jail. This comes after the community gathered today calling for justice. You have to go! You have to go! This afternoon, a group rallied outside the jail asking the district attorney to launch a criminal investigation into Kevil Wingo's death. 11 Alive reveal investigation and Andy Parati was the first to expose 2019 video of Mr. Wingo pleading for medical help inside the jail. Instead of bringing him to the hospital, jail staff put him alone in a padded room. It is there that he died. Wingo's family, the NAACP, the ACLU, and State Representative David Wilkerson all calling for action. Everyone ignored his cries for pain. That has to stop. It is time for this Cobb County District Attorney to take our pleas seriously and to listen to Kevin Wingo and his family for the first time. We all saw the video. I don't think anybody thinks that video is acceptable. The Cobb County District Attorney says it is reviewing records related to Mr. Wingo's death. Bartow County Schools confirmed a child tested positive for COVID-19 more than a week ago. They also say they were delayed notifying those who would come in contact with the child. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein-Peter spoke with a concerned mother and a nurse who says her daughter was exposed and she didn't find out until yesterday. I was scared to death. 
we could have prevented all of this and all of these rational thoughts that would go through my head if we'd have been notified sooner. Bartow County parent and nurse Tanya Frazier says she received a letter from the Department of Public Health on Wednesday saying her daughter had come into contact with a student at her school who had tested positive for the coronavirus over a week earlier. Frazier's daughter attends Cass Middle School, where officials say they followed the State Department of Public Health's protocol and compiled a list of people who had come into contact with that student when they found out about the case on August 11th. They then sent the list to DPH before sending an email to the student body notifying them about the positive case. In a statement from the middle school, they said that DHP made it very clear that they would take the school's tracing list and call those who needed to be quarantined. But Frazier says that didn't happen for days. My first question was, why are you just now notifying me? And they said that they were running about a week to a week and a half behind. In a statement from the health department, they said that per protocol, quarantine guidelines are to be given by the school to the family of the student being reported and DPH will follow up as quote soon as possible. I received the phone call yesterday and that's unacceptable because if any of these students do test positive, they've exposed everyone. Staff at Cass Middle School say that once they found out calls with DPH were delayed, they started calling people who had possibly come into contact with the virus. We are expecting our public health department to notify us and do their part in all of this. The Department of Public Health tells us they are still collecting data from the school and they cannot tell us just yet how many people total were impacted by that positive case. The community coming together to help nearly 200 people forced out of their homes by that massive apartment fire in Buckhead yesterday. The fire quickly tore through the building. The damage clearly evident as 11 Alive Sky Tracker flew above it yesterday. Even the units that weren't burned, they were closed off because of the flooding from all the water the fire department had to shoot in there trying to put out the blaze. But as Latasha Given shows us, people are reaching out to help residents during a very tough time. Well, as of this afternoon, a total of 182 people are now displaced because of the fire, including a popular radio DJ. Now, fire officials say, although there is only one injury, the damage is so bad, the building is now unlivable. And all of a sudden, um, my power goes out. But then I smell smoke. And I'm Media personality, radio god Stu from Hot 1079 says he went outside to investigate. I'm just hit with a big cloud of smoke right in my face. And I'm like, oh my God. And you can just feel the, the, the heat from the flames just coming, coming, coming. Stu was able to get out of the apartment building before it collapsed. I heard people screaming fire, um, but there were no alarms or anything. So I just kind of ignored it, thought people were just playing. Chris Bondcar says he walked out and saw clouds of smoke billowing over Buckhead. I walked outside just in case. I looked up, but I saw um, the AC units were smoking. And as I was walking out, you heard a loud pop and the flames started going up. The Red Cross is now assisting the 182 people that are displaced with food, clothing and money. Residents tell us the complex has paid for them to stay in hotels for a week and is working to relocate them to available units on other properties. Um, they're offering uh, per diems per day for food and personal items. Ron Carr says he was finally able to pick up his car today from the parking garage. Stu says in a year with so many tragedies, this is a reminder to be prepared for anything. Like that you don't realize that things like this can happen at any given moment, you know, so you definitely want to um, be prepared for this, you know, make sure that you have like your important information, your important documents, you know, things like that, like ready accessible. And we're looking at the claims about some residents who told us they never actually heard the fire alarms go off. They tell us instead they either saw smoke or their power went out. Now, fire officials tell us when they arrived, the system was activated. We'll continue to follow the story. You could see some unexpected cash from the IRS soon, beginning this week. So you got one day, tomorrow's Friday. The Treasury Department and the IRS will send interest payments to nearly 13.9 million taxpayers, the only individual taxpayers who filed their 2019 taxes by this year's July 15th deadline and received a refund qualify for the payment. The interest payments average around $18. 
If you haven't received your refund yet, the interest payments will be issued separately. The check is in the mail. Taxpayers who receive their refund by direct deposit will see their interest payments direct deposited into that same account. Everybody else will receive a check. These interest payments are taxable, so you will have to report them on your 2020 federal income tax return filed next year. Settlement in the Flint water crisis. The state of Michigan will now pay out $600 million to residents whose health was impacted by the lead-tainted drinking water. The class action lawsuit and that settlement comes six years after the crisis began in 2014. That's when the city's water source was switched from the city of Detroit to the Flint River in a move to save money. State regulators advised the city not to do it because of the already contaminated and aging pipes. Health experts say exposure to lead can cause behavioral problems and learning disabilities in children. 80% of the settlement money will go to kids Many under 18 that were impacted. The current governor says the state is also setting aside millions for water infrastructure investments and for early childhood programs in school aid and child health and nutrition services. In California, more than 367 known wildfires now burning across the state, destroying thousands of homes and businesses while towns with little relief Ha, uh, are in sight for these towns, these communities. The governor said nearly 11,000 lightning strikes over three days began the fires in Northern California. More than 100 miles of, uh, of topography is now engulfed. Southern California is seeing similar conditions. The San Francisco Bay Area now being smothered by some of the worst air quality in the world. A chaplain in Fulton County is showing what it means to be of service to your community. For years, he has performed funerals for those who can't afford it, and he's also helped feed the hungry. And even now, times are getting harder. He tells 11 Alive's Matt Pearl his mission is to keep doing what he can. Let us pray. Two days a week. Almighty and gracious God. Almighty and gracious Father. 400 times a year. We pray now. So we pray now for every good and precious gift. Reverend Clifton Dawkins says the same prayer. Mercy. Mercy for your mercy. For a person he's never met whose face he hasn't seen. There is a place where there'll be no more sickness. But that prayer. No more pain. That gesture matters. I think all human beings deserve a measure of dignity, especially in death. Dawkins is the chaplain director for Fulton County. He performs burials for those who cannot afford one. Face to face in your glory. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, his schedule has filled up. Whatever race or whatever religion, pain is still the same. Sadness and, and, and tears are still the same. The pandemic has meant more services here and here. There's a need. Dawkins owns a humble building on Atlanta's west side. <laughs> Two days a week here, he serves meals and gives clothes to whoever comes. 300 people at the church, there's no judgment. There's no, let me save you first before I can help you. This pandemic has had an effect financially, economically. I know what it feels like to be hungry, uh, to be homeless to feel like no one cares. When you have empathy for that, then something with that within you will push you. At a time of isolation, Dawkins is driven by empathy. It's why he still ran the grill last Saturday, even after what happened last Tuesday. Our church got broken into, um, stole a lot of equipment and things that we have. And, and so I had to really do some prayer about feeding this Saturday, but I knew I was going to do it. People are really desperate. So the feedings and the drives go on. And two days a week. God, we know that you are able. 400 times a year. To comfort those hearts and sadness. Clifton Dawkins says that same prayer with that same purpose. One of my uncles told me we should do all that we can while we can. Because when we can't, how can we? So I just try to do all that I can while I'm here. Mr. Dawkins says he spends tens of thousands of dollars of his own money every year to fund the food and clothing giveaways. This year, because of COVID-19, that number will rise. We're tracking two tropical depressions in the Atlantic Basin, one of these in the Caribbean, the other one nearing the Leeward Islands here. Stay with us. We're waiting for the 11 p.m. advisory to come in on both of these storms. Stay with us. We'll let you know where we think they're headed.
In sports, Hawks know where they will pick in the NBA draft. Plus, the Hawks general manager doesn't hold back on his criticism of the NCAA. Hawks coverage next in sports. People who are sick, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Virtual DNC means there are no big crowds, roaring cheers or applause. It's a different kind of energy. Joe Hankey talked to one political expert who says that could actually help the party. I accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States of America. Senator Kamala Harris delivered an emotional VP acceptance speech on Wednesday, featuring a few seconds of silence in a nearly empty room in place of a standing ovation from a packed arena. One of many examples showing the drastic difference in this year's DNC compared to years past. The virtual DNC also leading to lower TV viewership, network and cable TV numbers down 27% for day one, 26% for day two, compared to 2016. The Biden campaign's national press secretary, though, tweeting record numbers of people are watching online and hearing the Democratic platform this week. Conventions are for party activists. Um, it's to get them excited so that they can continue to campaign. I mean, 
continue to volunteer for their candidates. 11 Alive's political lives. analyst, Dr. For Andra Gillespie, an Emory University professor, says this year the focus is completely on the message being delivered, especially for the delegates from each state, some of the most vocal members of each party who would usually attend in person. You know, I know from personal experience, having been in the room, um, when certain things happen that you can barely hear what's going on. Sometimes some of the video vignettes don't get the type of attention um, that they would normally get because people are, everybody is having a sidebar conversation. And if you have 30,000 people in an arena and everybody is talking to each other, you can't hear what's going on. And Andre Gillespie tells me at this point, it is unclear, it's too early to tell which party will be able to best mobilize voters and actually get them to the polls in the middle of a pandemic in November. But coming out of the conventions in key states with key races, whichever party proves that they have the best field crews, that could be a major difference in November and decide races. The rain moved through Atlanta earlier and that is now pushed up to the north and it is falling apart up in North Georgia. We still have a couple of pockets where we do have some heavy rain up there to the north and east of us uh, that moved through parts of Hall County just a little bit earlier now in White County. Some more moderate rain there. We're doing OK here in Atlanta. Maybe a few sprinkles here left behind, but nothing particularly heavy. And then if you go up to the north and east, you see some of these showers here that moved over Lake Lanier from Hall County. There you see that moving into White County uh, and, and parts of Dawson County and Lumpkin County. And then as you get closer to the South Carolina line, we have some heavier showers, a little bit of lightning near Hartwell at this hour. And then a few heavier showers extending down into parts of Jackson County and over near the Danielsville area too. And notice these moderate to heavy showers over North Georgia are falling apart. Still some light rain, but they're just not as heavy as they were. We're no longer seeing any lightning up there either. And on the south side, mainly dry conditions. Again, maybe some of those clouds will shake out a couple of sprinkles here and there, but nothing really major. Our high today was 84. Just excuse me, a few <coughs> excuse me, a few degrees below the average today. We should be around 88, and we picked up about a third of an inch of rain today. And our surplus is about 11 inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. That rainy pattern is going to continue. We're going to see scattered showers at any time during the day tomorrow. Temperatures will hold in the low to mid 80s, and yes, we still have a lot of activity going on in the tropics. I'm waiting for any moment now a brand new uh, 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 advisory to come in from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, this storm. Tropical Depression 13 is down in the Atlantic, nearing the Leeward Islands, where we do have tropical storm watches in effect for the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, as well as Puerto Rico. We think it'll be north of Puerto Rico on Saturday. Don't think it'll be a direct hit there, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that because this forecast path could change. But then also we're watching what happens as this gets closer to Miami, could become a hurricane nearing South Florida and then potentially get into the Gulf of Mexico by Tuesday. If this track holds true, we'll have to watch any remnants if that would bring us more rain or any storms in here by the middle and end of the week. There's another system. We could have two tropical systems in the Gulf next week. This one nearing landfall around Tuesday between the Texas and Louisiana coastline again. That forecast track and intensity forecast could change as well. Back here at home, we're going to see scattered showers at any time tomorrow. Highs near 83, 50% chance for rain Saturday in the afternoon, high of 85, down to a 40% chance Sunday, slightly lower chances Monday, and then rain chances coming back up next week. And a lot of those rain chances for the middle and end of next week will depend on where those tropical systems go. Sports on this Thursday night, even in the midst of a pandemic, the NBA was able to pull off the most exciting lottery in sports. The NBA draft lottery last year, it was Zion Williamson in his lottery. New Orleans won that one. This year's draft class, not as strong, but there are a couple of pretty good names at the top. The Hawks had a 12.5% chance at the number one pick, and that is the second best you can get. But they also had an overwhelming 25% chance at receiving number six. And guess what? That's exactly where they will pick sixth. Minnesota won the lottery, and they will pick first. Hawks general manager Travis Schlenk was happy that they didn't fall below six, but Trey Young on social media not thrilled. It may not matter because with a young, talented core, the Hawks' expectations certainly are rising. That could mean trades and free agents. We'll look at all our options. Um, we, we've proven we're, uh, we're not afraid to uh, move one direction or the other in the draft. So we'll, we'll see what options are out there for us on that front. But, you know, if we stay at six, we're, we're going to take the player we think is, is going to be the best player long term. And this year's draft is already tough for general managers. Mr. Schlenk said that he usually scouts during March Madness, not this year. And the uncertainty isn't going away. 
college basketball is rapidly approaching and when asked about preparing for upcoming drafts and trades without seeing as much college basketball he did not mince words when it came to the ncaa with college football it, it's kind of come down to the conferences right um so you, you i would assume that when we get to college basketball and we don't have a vaccine we'd be in the same situation it doesn't appear like the ncaa as a governing body is going to step up and say this is what everybody's going to do they're going to it's going to be a free-for-all so we could easily see one conference playing and you know all the other conferences not playing so I, it's just too it's too hard to predict so now a decision will have to be made who is number one uga's anthony edwards certainly could be he is presumed a top two pick maria martin tells us how the ant-man is preparing for life in the nba at the university of georgia that moment sparked something the university of georgia could marvel at for a long time the top recruit in the country in 2019 picking the dogs i feel like college was a great experience for me because when i had bad games people would talk about me I had good games people would talk about me talk good talk bad so like I feel like I needed that. And it's a good thing he's used to the chirping because now he's potentially going to go number one overall in the NBA draft. Why do you feel like you're the most NBA ready? I feel like because of the uh, physical gifts uh, that God gave me. I mean, my body, my, my size, it's not too many 6'5 guards, it's like 225 that can move like me. I think he's got an incredible future. I think he's going to get nothing but better. Edwards is ready for the NBA. His only hope, though, is to continue wearing the only number he's ever worn, number five. My birthday's on the 5th. My sister's birthday's on the 5th. And my mom and grandma passed on the 5th. So I just, I love number five. That is sports. We'll take a break. Back right after this. For information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray.
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association we're going to watch those rain chances tomorrow. 60% chance for scattered showers to develop at any time during the day tomorrow. On Saturday, we go back to the afternoon and evening variety of storms. 50% uh, chance for that. A 40% chance Sunday and then a little lower on Monday and a 30% chance for showers. And then the rain chances for Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, especially Wednesday and Thursday, are going to be very dependent on what happens with those tropical systems that get into the Gulf of Mexico. We'll be fine tuning that for you as we get into next week. Thank you for watching 11 Alive Prime Time. Switch to 11 Alive now for Uplay. Remember, the news continues all the time online. Have a great night. Friday is upon us. Extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at